Hello and welcome dear professional students and learners to the very important topic on nitrosamine impurities. So the topic is very vast and in this video only the nitrosamine impurities and their classification along with the limits will be discussed. So let's start with the video. See the nitrosamines are chemical compounds with the general structure of N and O. So this is nitroso group attached to the amine group. So this is the generalized structure N and double bond O. So NO group is the nitroso group. The classification based on chemistry. If you see the chemistry of this nitrosamine impurities, you will found that there are small nitrosamines and some complex nitrosamines. So small nitrosamines are generally originates from the synthesis root, while the complex nitrosamines or the bigger structures with this group originates from the API that is drug substance related impurities and these are called as NDSRI. Nitrosamine drug substance related impurities. Now see the small nitrosamines are mostly originating from the synthesis root and the important and identified nitrosamine impurities are they are, they are given in the various guidance documents and the present table I have taken from the guideline from USFD and they have given the different nitrosamine impurities like NDMA, NDEA, NMDA, NMPA, NIPEA, NDIPA with their respective acceptable intake limits and these limits are given in nanogram per day. So these are the very potent type of impurities that's why the limit is very very stringent and the lowest limit is 26.5 nanogram per day and these are based on the maximum daily dose. Then coming to the another type of impurities which are related to the API. These are called as NDSRIs, nitrosamine drug substance related impurities. Now we have a guideline giving these examples of the NDSRIs along with their respective classes based on the CPCA, carcinogenic potential database they have created and based on that the limits are given for this NDSRIs. The example is N nitroso sertaline. So this sertaline is an antidepressant API and its impurity is N nitroso sertaline, which is NDSRI of sertaline, and its limit is 100 nanogram per day. So these NDSRIs are subcategory of nitrosamine impurities that share structural similarity to the active pharmaceutical ingredient that is API. In drug products, typically lack compound specific mutagenicity and carcinogenicity data to inform safety assessments. So this is regarding the NDSRIs. Then coming to the classification based on toxicity. The nitrosamines are classified as class 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So based on the toxicity, class 1 is there. And the class 1 impurities are also called as known nitrosamine impurities. Like we have seen in the table of, in the previous slide, NMDA and NDEA, all these types are the known nitrosamine impurities. These are small impurities, small nitrosamine impurities. So these are the class 1 impurities. And for this, in vivo carcinogenicity studies are available and these are also known as known nitrosamines. Then class 2, in vitro toxicity studies, AIMS test on bacteria available. 
so these are class 2 class 3 lack in the in vivo and in vitro carcinogenicity studies but have a toxicity alert in silico studies that means based on the qsar models these class 3 have the alert for toxicity then coming to the class 4 and 5 these impurities are less toxic and they lack toxicity potential and will be controlled based on the ICH Q3A and Q3B guidelines. So these class 4 and 5 impurities are not that much toxic and can be controlled as per the principles given in ICH Q3A and Q3B. So once again we can uh, see the classes, their definitions and the proposed action. So class 1, these are known mutagenic carcinogens. These are known nitrosamines. These are controlled at or below the compound specific acceptable limits. The, those acceptable limits are the AI limits. Then class 2, these are known mutagens with unknown carcinogenic potential. The bacterial mutagenicity is positive. No rodent carcinogenicity data is available. These are known mutagens with unknown carcinogenic potential. So these are controlled at or below the TTC level or the TTC limit. TTC limit is given in the ICH M7 guideline. And based on that, these impurities are controlled. Then coming to the class 3, these are alerting structures unrelated to the structure of the drug substance and no mutagenicity data is there. So these are controlled at or below acceptable limits, appropriate TTC or conduct the bacterial mutagenicity assay. So for class 3, if you conduct the bacterial mutagenicity assay and if it gets the positive result, then it will become class 2 impurity and class 2 impurity will have a TTC based approach for the limit and if it is negative in the bacterial mutagenicity assay then it will go to the class 5. Class 5 is the class of impurity which is non-toxic and can be treated as non-mutagenic impurity. So this is regarding the class 3. Now coming to class 4, these are alerting structure, same alert in drug substance or compounds related to the drug substances like process intermediates which have been tested and are non-mutagenic. So these are treated as non-mutagenic impurity. Then coming to class 5, no structural alerts or alerting structure with sufficient data to demonstrate lack of mutagenicity or carcinogenicity. So these are treated as non-mutagenic impurities. So then you consider the difference between 4 and 5. The 4 have alerting structure while the 5 don't have alerting structures. So this is the classification based on toxicity for impurities. Nitrosamine are the impurities which have mutagenic and carcinogenic potential. That's why the mutagenic classification is applied to these nitrosamine impurities. And these are also the cohort of concern. That means these are very potent and may produce tumor or cancer in the species. Then classification based on toxicity. Class 1, we have seen. These are the known impurities with the AI limits. Then class 2, these have in vitro toxicity studies M test on bacteria available and these are controlled at or below TTC. Class 3 impurities lack in vivo and in vitro carcinogenicity studies but have toxicity alert. So if these have toxicity alert, then the bacterial test is required to be conducted. Then if bacterial test comes positive, it will go to class 2. Otherwise, it will go to class 5. And for these impurities, read alert 
read across studies are done these are also called as structure activity relationship studies or sar then cpca the carcinogenic potency categorization approach is provided by the regulatory authorities based on the structures the presence of alpha carbon beta carbon and the based on the structures uh, structure characters this cpca score is given that is called as potency score and based on that potency score the limits are derived then based on the specific appropriate ttc the limits can be given for these impurities then coming to class 4 and 5 these lack the toxicity potential however 4 has alerting structure and 5 don't have the alerting structure these lack toxicity potential and will be controlled based on the ichq3a and q3b that means these are the non mutagenic impurities and these are treated like non mutagenic impurities so if you go to the m7 guideline ICH M7 and see the classification of genotoxic impurities. Similar classification is there. Once again, you can go through this classification as class 1 are non mutagenic carcinogens, class 2 are non mutagens, but these don't have the carcinogenic potential or these may or may not have the carcinogenic potential. That's why these are called as non mutagens with unknown carcinogenic potential. So these two difference you can remember like class one are the mutagen and carcinogens. Second are the mutagens but unknown carcinogens. Their carcinogenicity is unknown. Class three shows alerting structures and unrelated to the drug substance. These are unrelated to drug substance with no supporting mutagenicity data. Now the difference between these two class two and three is that these are mutagens and here class 3 are non mutagens but they have alerting structures they may or may not be mutagens then class 4 these show alerting structures related to drug substance which is itself non mutagenic now these class 4 have alerting structures but these are related to the drug substances here in class 3 these are unrelated to the drug substances and 5 show no alerting structures so if you go by reverse way class 5 there is no alerting structure class 4 there is alerting structure but related to the api then class 3 now we are going in reverse direction class 3 they show alerting structure and they are unrelated to the drug substance then class 2 they are mutagens with unknown carcinogenic potential then class 1 they are mutagenic and carcinogenic so when you come from class 1 2 3 4 to 5 the toxicity decreases and if you go by reverse the toxicity increases that's why the class 1 impurities are most toxic then class 2 are less toxic then class 3 are lesser toxic then class 4 are lesser toxic than class 3, class 2 and 1 and class 5 are having no alerting structure and can be treated as non-mutagenic impurities. So this is the brief introduction to the nitrosamine impurities, their classification and the limits. Because without understanding this classification, we cannot understand why these uh, limits are derived and why these impurities are gaining much more importance nowadays the reason behind nitrosamine importance is that these are very toxic in nature these are genotoxic carcinogenic and these have a very low limit that's why the nitrosamine impurities are very important and is a hot topic nowadays in the pharmaceutical industry also, the nitrosamines are cohort of concern. These are genotoxic impurities. And the nitrosamine related questions are always asked in the interviews. So, in this video, we have seen the nitrosamine impurity meaning, a small introduction we have seen, their classification and the limits.
सो थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग द वीडियो डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू द फार्मा लर्निंग इन डेप चैनल एंड थैंक्स फॉर युअर सपोर्ट फॉर द अदर वीडियोज थैंक यू